Hello and welcome to Newspeak, the New Culture Forum's weekly current affairs programme. This week I'm joined by Philip Kisseley, Senior Fellow, and Peter Whittle, the Director of the New Culture Forum. And this week we are going to be doing a special on one subject alone, and that is free speech, following what happened with Salman Rushdie in New, Lo- New York. So Peter, would you like to kick yeah, off no, by giving us your uh, reaction? Yeah, obviously it is, it is such great importance, Emma, uh, that in fact, you know, it really wipes for me everything else off the agenda. I'm mm. sure it's the case for you mm. too. I think the the point is what's interesting about this particular case of some Rushi being attacked. Thank goodness he's actually seems to be okay. This was last Saturday, of course. Is that you then have to explain to a whole new generation of people mm. the whole background to it, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Because uh, you know, well, actually. No disrespect, but you weren't alive when this happened, actually, mm-hmm. were you? I mean, uh, you'd remember it I remember well. it vividly, yeah. But when, when, he, yeah, when he wrote the Satanic Verses, uh, there was a fat one put on his head, as we know by the, by, uh, the Ayatollah Khomeini of Iran. Um, but what happened as a result, that there were huge demonstrations in this country, people calling for his death, people burning the book in public. And the general level of support for him was, shall we say, 50-50, mm. you know, it should have been, uh, from that moment on, we should have realized, and I think some people did mm-hmm. with presidents, realized this is the time where we stand firm and say, no, we do not burn books in this country. We don't kill people for writing things that they believe, whether they are cartoons or whether they're literary novels, it mm-hmm. doesn't make any difference. Um, but we sort of didn't, or rather the people who should have stood up for him did not. And quite often I have to say it was not just people on like the left actually as well. It was like some really quite conservative mainstream voices uh, were sort of saying, well actually you shouldn't be rude to people. Uh, you, you know, These you people obviously hadn't read the book either mm. because there's nothing in there that is particularly rude. Well, it, yes, it, but these things aren't sort of logical, they aren't logical. It was just somehow we, you know, you shouldn't, you should respect someone's religion um, uh, and all of this. And I have to say that I was sort of watching in the aftermath of this, Christopher Hitchens uh, speaking in the early years of this century um, about the threat from radical Islam Mm. when it comes to free speech. Mm. And he was quite clear about, he said, you know, speak out while you can, because you will not Mm. be able to. They'll come after you sooner or later Mm. Mm -hmm. and accuse you of Islamophobia, which is exactly what's happening. Mm. And there will be many more of these incidents. But the point is, is that we have to keep highlighting them to a new generation yeah. because they just simply mm-hmm. don't know about mm-hmm. it. You know? Even even things like the Danish cartoon affair, most people, yes. and yeah, not only of my generation, but I think many Brits don't know very mm. much about it, or the murder of Theo van Gogh, the fact that we've had, since Salman Rushdie, we have had multiple occasions, Charlie mm. Hebdo, the mm. murder of the teacher Samuel Patti in France, and now that still in this country, we have a teacher, the Batley grammar teacher, mm still in hiding with his young family because he fears for his life. So f- for me, as you say, someone who wasn't born at the time that this fatwa was put out on Salman Rushdie, it seems to me that I have grown up in a society that has gradually internalized mm. the, the censorship I, of Sharia law. I, th- I think that I think that's the, a, a, a brilliant point and it was a point that I was going to make. It's just that it's people are internalizing it and just accepting it on the one hand. But the other thing is people get used to it as well and it just becomes they internalize it it becomes part of them but it just becomes ordinary you know Mm -hmm. this this ludicrous situation we're in where we've got this hierarchy of needs and and the the need at the top is not to offend islam you know that Mm -hmm. but that's been around for such a long time now because in, in many i mean in many senses at least within the last 30 years that is the ultimate and the original threat of cancel culture. Mm. That is that if you say something that is offensive, then it is blasphemous mm. and you may be harmed or murdered as a result. The, different, the, difference, is, the, 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 <laughs> the difference is with Islam where in relation to cancel culture, of course, is most people understand cancel culture as a really nasty pile on on social media, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is awful. You know, and indeed maybe losing your livelihood. Yeah. But the point about the threats, uh, Islamist threats, is that they carry, they carry out 
They carry mm. them out often, mm. you know. And I mean, and they, you know, basically, you're talking about violence. Mm. You see, that's mm. the huge. So when people, for example, talk, say, "Oh, well, you know, it's not good to, uh, you know, uh, uh, you wouldn't like it if, for example, we criticised or joked about Christianity." I mean, you sort of think, "Are you kidding?" <laughs> that's all the I time. mean, it's happened yeah. throughout my yeah. entire yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. And indeed, but the f fact is, you know, what, we're not going to come after you mm -hmm. with a knife. Mm. And actually, or a bomb. But and it's, actually, there's a there's a, an international element to mm. it as well because mm. if you remember when Samuel Patty, the French school teacher, was beheaded mm. for showing a cartoon of Muhammad to his class, mm. it was a, a class about free speech, I think. Um, the international community in Pakistan. Um, it, you know, multiple Muslim countries around the world, Turkey in particular, they added fuel to the fire by legitimating this and actually mm. looking at the statement that was put out um, in Iran in response to this, the re reactions in Iran and the reactions in the Muslim world mm. were jubilant. They mm. were, were, you know, extremely, um, you know, they, they, they were really celebrating the fact that finally Salman Rushdie had been attacked yeah. in this well, way. I, th I think there are two kinds of psychopaths here, right? And I, and I really do mean psychopaths. It's psychopaths who carry out the, the act and, and revel in carrying out the act of murdering someone or trying to kill someone, but psychopaths who, who revel in the thought and salivate at it happening. And you see right across social media and you see right across the media, you know, well, actually he deserves it. You know, how, how, what, what else do you expect? You know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And, and, and the unwritten bit of the well, tweet the or the unwritten blaming. yeah he asked it, for it. It, yeah it, 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 it's more than he asked for it isn't it great that it's mm -hmm. happened you know i think we're there now so i remember shirley williams talking about this years and do you remember years yeah, and years ago time, saying yeah. well oh well it's so offensive to them it's terrible we've gone one stage further now it's so offensive it's terrible and you're getting your just desserts so i think that's where we are now and so mm -hmm. it's really important to push back on all of those narratives and call it out for what it is which is psychopathy but the thing is, you, we say push back, and we would all agree with that. Mm. We're not in any disagreement about, about any of this. Do people care enough? That's a big question. But I think, I think that even when you have uh, leaders, Boris Johnson, Emmanuel Macron, coming out and being much more robust than people have previously been. Has anyone said this is a religion of peace? Or anything like I that haven't yet. seen that, no. but I no, think that, that I think that um, even even when we have leaders now who are more robust in defending free speech, they recognize mm. maybe they recognize the problem for what it is. They recognize the seriousness of it. That the fact that we have for the last thirty years since Salman Rushdie, particularly, repeatedly capitulated mm. in every single instance of this occurring. Mm that the message that this sends, forget about the message that this sends for a minute to the people who would like to carry out these acts and the power that mm. gives them mm. over us as a society. But the fact that this is what, um, there's a, a Dutch professor called Paul Klitter who refers to um, extrajudicial limitations on free speech. Mm. That what all of these different affairs have, have created, whether it's the Salman Rushdie affair, the Danish cartoons affair, repeatedly what we've actually done is we have created a, a culture where we have all of these extrajudicial limitations on our free speech. So mm. it's more than just internalizing. By capitulating repeatedly, we've actually got ourselves into a position mm. where even if we have leaders that come out and robustly say, this this is wrong and we condemn it in practice everyone's already self-censoring yeah, because they know is, they yeah. can't publish a mm. book that's going to be offensive mm. to particular communities mm. they know that if they say something they might lose their job and there's and there's something else as well it appeals to the in, in terms of the broader culture it appeals it, it appeals to the masochistic aspect of it you know the 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 self-flagellation of the West you know we deserve this it's another part of that we deserve thing isn't it it's it's not the you know it's not the the psycho part of it mm -hmm. is more the the oh we deserve this because we're so awful we're so terrible our culture is so bad and you, and you see that right through the right through the discourse I suppose what I mean you know when, when I was asking that do, do people care uh, obviously I do hope that you know people realize that we care passionately um, it was just my one of my worries I was thinking particularly uh, about younger people mm. And the fact that there are many younger people now, and I've had anecdotal, mm. uh, you know, examples mm. when I've been into talking to young people who genuinely think that to be offensive or to be rude or whatever it is, 
um, is in fact far worse, uh, a, mm-hmm. far, a far greater thing than, for example, free speech and just yeah. and well, the other causing thing offense. Is, but the other thing is they're frightened of being offensive as well because not just mm-hmm. for the retribution of that kind of retribution, but the, the, the social stigma and the, the Twitter pylons and, and, and all mm-hmm. of those things as well. That's why people, young people, and I know because I talk to them a lot, that's why young people just won't get involved. What did you think of Jo Yun Morn, the QC's tweet, where he, it was really interesting, his criticism of articles that were essentially in defense mm. of Rushdie mm. uh, or in condemning the attack, he used it to make a point about power. Mm. Um, and it seemed as if he was suggesting that Salman Rushdie was punching down on the Ayatollah <laughs> Um, rather than the other way around on this on this on this uh, religion that that commands so much power in in this country is unbelievable much more so than any other religion i mean uh, clear water between any any other religion it's it's fascinating isn't it i i looked at that tweet and and and, and this character you know who's who's ludicrous who this is, is the guy who killed the is, fox this right? is the guy who killed this is the fox murderer. in a kimono mm-hmm. yeah um don't, don't forget the kimono uh and and yeah, I, I kind of looked at the tweet and I thought, hang on, are you, are you being serious here? You, you're mm-hmm. talking about power and, and you know, fighting back against the, you're a lawyer. You went to public school, I think. I know his father went to uh, Eton and, and, and Oxford. Um, you know, you're incredibly wealthy. You are the epitome mm-hmm. of the cultural establishment. And this is what they do, isn't it? This mm-hmm. is gaslighting. You know, you've mm-hmm. just had a, a different conversation talking about gaslighting. Mm-hmm. But this is what they do. This is what the identitarians do. They, they, they gaslight mm-hmm. us and they, and they pretend they're something they're not. They pretend they're outside. I've said this before. They pretend they're rebels, but they're not. They're absolutely the epitome of the establishment. Going, going back to what you were saying about whether people care about this, there's another aspect to, to this, it's other than just free speech, that this is, was regarded as blasphemy, it was regarded as blasphemous, and that this is a religious edict, a religious command to kill somebody who had, who had offended the Prophet Muhammad, who had who'd been blasphemous within the laws of Islam. Mm. Um, and all around the world, in various countries, Muslim countries, Pakistan is one example I'm thinking of particularly, there are persecuted people, people who are apostates, who are Christians, who are mm. other minority religions in various um, countries around the world, who have this kind of threat on their life, hanging over them every day in their daily life. And people who are put on death row mm. for, um, for insulting the Prophet Muhammad. And we don't talk about this very much in the West. Why, and by sometimes- the way, sorry, I have to say this, I've got a- the Prophet Muhammad. Why do you call him Prophet Muhammad? To make it clear. Uh, to make yeah, the I know, but I, I, would, I would like, you know, news readers. I feel like saying, why are you calling him the Prophet Muhammad? Why, would you say Jesus is the son of God? Mm. Of course you wouldn't. Mm. Because I, I, I guess it's not possible in the context of the conversation to make no, it No, no, I'm not, not picking you up on a personal level, but it's, it's actually an interesting point because these things have been... Why, you know, that mm-hmm. would be a start, would mm-hmm. it not? You know, actually, but, that, but I, I just, I, actually, just that, I, I, and I, I'm not picking you up on that either because I would say the same thing, but it's, it's, it's another representation of the utter over, you know, overplayed respect that, that, that mm-hmm. we give this religion in relation to other religions. Mm-hmm. It's, I, it's a really interesting thing. I just thing. want to go back to what I was going to ask you because I think that this is really important, which is that every now and then, this comes to our shores and we see it in what's happened to Salman Rushdie in some big international event or we see it in Europe like with Charlie Hebdo mm. but this is happening all the time mm-hmm. in in other countries mm-hmm. and do you think that you said do, do people care but do you think that there is a general lack of concern and a lack of understanding of the interconnectedness of these things when people talk about it they talk about it siloed like it's a free speech thing or maybe they don't understand the element of blasphemy that is involved in this well, well they I, don't take they don't take this as i've seen in the last couple of days people not taking the fatwa seriously saying well mm. the per- only person who's responsible is the person who who committed the attack not recognizing the fact that the iranian regime and particularly 
a religious foundation mm. in Iran mm. put a three million bounty on his head. Yeah. No, I, I think people saying that that's just sophistry. That's just nonsense. They know very well it's part of a broader. You know, they in, in any other context we would call this systematic, wouldn't we, or systemic? You know, mm -hmm. but but in in the context that suits the people who use that language, they just don't use it at all. Again, they're playing fast and loose with language, and it and it serves them in 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 this particular context. Yeah, I mean, I I, I hope people care. Uh, when I say care, you sort of have more or less covered it there actually um, we're living in a time where people no longer know or understand the very basis of what makes us great as a society mm. right um, they either don't know about it or it's been kind of drummed out of them mm. but the end result is that they don't mm. and I think it's particularly true of younger people uh, for again for the obvious reasons um, that is the worry Mm. You know, so if you say free speech, you have no democracy if you don't have free speech. Uh, they know, they know, they don't understand quite what, what is the big deal about this. Um, but and I you think do sometimes despair and think, well, actually, what would it take for you to care? But that ha that's that's more to do with education than it is to do with experience. Because, like I said, even throughout my own lifetime, it's been punctured by these mm. events where this sort of thing yes, has happened yes. and so people are aware of it when Charlie Hebdo happened there was wall-to-wall -wall coverage for days and days and days mm. now when something like that happens you get a, mm. a bit of interest from the media because it's become such a common occurrence so I think people in my generation are aware of it but it's just that they have they've perhaps not been educated in understanding the values of the things that mm. are at stake mm. well, this is part yeah. of something as well people are resigned to it as well when something happens mm. no matter how mm. terrible something is if it happens over and over again people become inured to it they become mm. used to it and and I think there's something there I think I'm I'm interested to know how people respond to this and 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 it'd be interesting to know what what some viewers think is it is it primarily anger is it fear at what's going on um is it feeling resigned what what, what what's the what's the mix of could responses to this could it perhaps be the fact that because we've internalized this censorship mm -hmm. People now think, and this is an element that I think is particularly pernicious about self-censorship yeah. and censorship in general, which is that the, the aim is not just to silence your speech, mm. it's to prevent thought. Yeah. It's to prevent, mm. in order to stop yourself from wrong speaking, mm. the easiest yeah. way to do that is to it's, not it's have any wrong thing. Wrong thing. And, and and, so and, I, but I suppose that's, that's what I'm saying. How, how can we frame our emotions around this and to understand how you respond I, to something that's exactly, might be a way of getting to thinking. But that's exactly why I think that actually people people's reactions have been dulled yeah. because they yeah. aren't processing it they're not res they're, well, it's not it's not sort of um it's not being they're not proce processing it but also sorry but they're not processing also you you, you know you, you you work in you're a cultural historian mm. uh, there's no question about it uh the whole of the creative area um are the most self-censoring Mm. They wouldn't go near this subject well, I with think, a barge pot. Well, Look, the very well, beacons of free speech. Yeah. You're never going to see it. Whether it's, you know, you, you are never going to see something that questions this kind of orthodoxy that somehow one shouldn't offend and say, give, you should give respect to religion regardless. You know, why should I respect religion that thinks I'm an abomination. So the man. limits of everyone's world becomes narrower and narrower Absolutely. and narrower. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. you know, just, just saying that I work in a university and actually having this conversation, you know, we have lots of fairly hard hitting conversations every week on, on, on this show, but having this conversation specifically about Islam and specifically about an atrocity and I'm talking and I'm, I'm aware actually of my heart going a little bit mm. because I'm 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 walking on thin ice mm. here, mm. Um, and I know we all are in, uh, to, to, in in certain different ways. But in terms of my my where I am professionally, yes. I really am. But it, if I don't do it, then I'll feel a hell of a lot worse. Mm. And if mm. I don't do it, then other people won't do it. And I'm not putting myself up as some some great kind of brave person here. I'm not. But mm. you know what I mean. There's, it's got to start somewhere. Yes. And and it's just nowhere in the universities. It's yeah. nowhere in the yeah. institutions. And and that's the really really frightening thing. Well, it's self-perpetuating, and I think people don't realise that you can issue valid criticisms and have these conversations without, you know being able to be validly accused of mm. being hateful or mm. anything like that. I'd say just, you know, my, my final point really would be 
I think one of the problems is, is it was tacitly accepted at some stage mm. that for multiculturalism to work on the scale that we have it mm. there's got to be a price to pay there has got to be uh, restrictions on free speech mm. right we always have restrictions on free speech in this country you can't incite violence and murder quite rightly right mm. that was always always been on the statute statute book but that was that was the, that is the problem that basically in order for it to work you've got to kind of ignore certain mm. things we, mm. we've seen that over the past 30 years as you say but in different ways not just in this particular mm. area but that is the problem in a way how do you you've got to say look you can be part of our society but you know these these are our values uh, and mm -hmm. i'm afraid like it or lump it and we know what happens when free speech is curtailed things go underground things become you know malignant and, and mm -hmm. things explode don't they that's mm -hmm. always what yeah. happens you want thing you want discussion out in the open you want dissent it's the healthiest mm -hmm. thing when you don't have that you're going to get mm -hmm. more violence more bloodshed and to, to make to make my sort of closing point on yeah. this and drawing on what you were saying i think actually that when you have a multicultural society and you therefore have different sets of manners and customs Systems and so on within one hmm. within one overall community that the consequence of that is that you you end up with the state thinking that it needs to legislate for manners hmm. in order to oh, yeah. ensure that those hmm. groups can get along with each other hmm. but that is always going to end up trying to legislate people's it's not thoughts just manners. and feelings the man, it's not just manners it is it is beliefs mm. it is it is at fundamental foundational beliefs mm. right that's why no one can tell you anymore well you know we have <coughs> british culture oh yes you've got to sign up to british culture and then they say well it's uh, tolerance and, yeah. and uh, nobody knows what british culture well, no, is they, they purposely do not mm. Mm. just to make it more and more nebulous and there's one other thing as well you know it becomes a babel doesn't it where where nobody can actually communicate because nobody's yes, exactly. nobody's using language that is meaningful yeah. and and if it, it all comes back down to that idea of using language doesn't it mm -hmm. and if we can't communicate with each other we can't speak to each other then the only thing left is fighting you know, and, that, and, and and we're not a million miles away from that. Yeah. So I think that's we're going to have to wrap up for this yeah. week. But thank you so much, Peter. Thank you, Philip. You. Thanks, Emma. And please let us know what you think in the comments down below, and we will see you next time on Newspeak. Hello. If you're enjoying the New Culture Forum channel and you believe in our mission, may I invite you to join our membership scheme at the link below or on our website, newcultureforum.org.uk. Our work is more important now than ever, and we have great plans ahead for the future, but we can't do it without your support. From as little as £3 per month, you can help ensure that we continue on our mission. As a member, you'll receive a range of benefits, including access to exclusive content, invitations to our private events, including here at our studios, free copies of our books, and much, much more, including, of course, our famous NCF mug. If you aren't able to become a member, then please help us by clicking this button and subscribing to our channel. It's completely free. Just remember to also click the bell icon so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you.